Welcome back to another Toyota Land Cruiser video. In today's video, I'll be installing extended brake lines on my 9580 series Land Cruiser. The reason why I'm installing extended brake line is because I ordered my lift kit and it's gonna be here in a few, about next, by the end of this week. And by the end of the week, it should be here. So I have a lift kit coming, which is about a three to four inch lift. I'll talk more about that lift kit once that gets here, but I'm gonna explain um, the brake lines. So there's two front brake lines or there's two brake lines in the front that you want to extend and then there is one in the rear that you want to extend as well so on the front you have one right here this is the one that goes in the middle um, right in the middle of your axle so you got a hard line and then goes into the axle hard line and then you have another one that's a bit more smaller this is a female in and a female in this is on the passenger side so on your right side that drops into your caliper and then on your front you also have your brake line that goes from your um you, from the knuckle to the caliper those you don't have to extend so technically there's four brake lines on your front but there's only two that you have to extend which are these two so there's these two guys and then on the rear you have uh, and like i say on the rear axle you technically you have about three rubber holes there's three lines but two of those lines are stationary that goes into your calipers that don't need to be extended and this is the one that needs to be extended because this goes onto the frame that has the hard one on uh, your hard line and then it goes to the axle so this one needs to be extended because when you're flexing it can snap there's all sorts of company that makes extended brake lines um trail gears etc etc they all make the stainless steel which runs about almost 150 dollars instead i went to my local um i went to this local company they're called alaska rubber and supply if you live in a big city you should have a company like this they deal with like hoses like industrial stuff they can make hoses stuff like that so this company alaska rubber and supply they were able to make me three of these hose uh, three of these lines for a total of 77 dollars which is a amazing deal this is like half of what i would have i would have paid i would order so this is what they're called they're called female 10 mil toyota so just go to your local just search up your rubber hose or any company like that in your city and that can make it. And uh, yeah, for 80 bucks, they were able to make me three new lines. And I had them made it, um, I had them make it six inches longer. So six inches longer from what these guys were. So you just bring your old ones in and then um, go from there. Or if you guys are watching this video and if you guys have an 80 series and you guys don't want to measure yours, um, here, you can use mine. So I had a 17 inch, which is the... Um, the passenger side so this is the front passenger that has female to female that one i had a 17 inch um and then these guys have a female and a male in i had one at 17 inch and 21 inch so 21 17 and 17 with female female the female to female again that's the front passenger that's where it goes from a hard line into another hard line so if you guys have an 80 series land cruiser like mine those are the measurements that i recommend uh, at least six inches from factory and that will that will accommodate anywhere from a three to five inch lift so let's go ahead and install these guys here we are under the rear of the 80 series land cruiser and you can see there's a brake hose right here this is from the axle to the caliper and you don't have to replace those unless yours are bad there's one on each side <laughs> And then they're powered by this hard line. And then there's one right here, which is the one that we are replacing. This is from the axle to the frame, which has your main line. So we have to extend this one here. So we're gonna go ahead and unbolt this and do it. I'm not gonna show you guys how to do it. It's pretty self-explanatory. Um, but if you guys don't know how to do it, you probably shouldn't have be, you shouldn't be tackling this job. This is, uh, you're messing with your brake system. So you have to know what you're doing. So definitely uh, have somebody professionally do it if you're not comfortable doing this. But uh, we're going to go ahead and take this off right here, right there. And then we might even have to take that bracket off or we might just have to leave that bracket and then we'll go ahead and extend it. So I'm going to start from the rear and then I'll work my way to the front and then we'll bleed from the back first and then we'll bleed from the front. So easiest way I found out is unplug this hard line, use your uh, flare wrench and then unplug the bolt from here. So that you can have the whole wire like this and then you just take your 17 and loosen this in and then we'll go ahead and take it off from the bracket and install the new one onto this bracket and go from there so pretty simple really really easy 
And I also put a little cap right there on the hard line so it don't lose all the fluid. But I'm not too worried we lose it because we're gonna put new ones anyway. So make sure you have towels and stuff. I'm not too worried about all the extra fluids coming out. But uh, brake fluid does ruin your paint. So if you do care about your paint or anything like that, be cautious of that. So in order to remove the brake hose from the bracket, you remove this clip. This is like a C-clip. Pull this out and the new one actually fits in really nice. It's perfectly in there. It's the same fitting, so there's no modification needed. So that's the new one. And then we'll go ahead and screw in this piece to the female end. And then we'll go ahead and bolt this back onto the frame. And then we'll put the hard line onto this female end. The rear brake line is now installed. You can see how tall it is. You can leave it like that. I'm gonna leave it up like this. I actually found it easier to install the hose without the bracket. So take the hose and make it long like this so that you can screw it in. And then after that, you can connect the feet, the female end to the bracket and then attach the bracket to the frame. And then the last thing you wanna do is put this um, hard line in. Wear some glove because a ton of brake line was dripping down and I have some kind of cloth in the bottom of the floor. So now you wanna just go ahead and spray some brake cleaner, make sure everything's nice and clean and dry so that when you go and bleed your brakes, if there's any leak or anything like that, you will see any kind of new fluid leaking. So, so we're done with the rear. We're gonna go ahead and move into the front. I'll show you which front to do. We are under the front of the Land Cruiser. This is the passenger side. So you guys can see here, we have that one brake line that goes from the frame to the axle. So this is the female end, female end. And then right on top of the oil pan, we have the hard line that goes from the top to the center. This is the one that feeds both of them. This one has one male, one female. And then also on the axle, on each caliper, you have one hose. But those hose that goes from the axle to the caliper, you don't have to replace those because when your axle is drooping, the axle stays, um, those, ho those lines are on to the axle. So you can replace them if you want to, since you're at it, you know, you're doing a whole brake system. Or uh, if you need to replace the hose, you can do all four of them, whatever. But we're just gonna replace this one and this one. I'm gonna go ahead and check up the vehicle and remove that um, passenger tire. You probably don't have to, but I'm gonna do it just so I have more room to work with. And then this one here, we're probably gonna go ahead and jack up the front so I have more room to get under here and work with it. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with um actually i might drive my truck up so there's more room we'll see what happens either way just get them out and put the new ones in front passenger tire is removed for ease of access and here's a better look of what the hose i was talking about so on the axle you have a hose that goes from the axle to the caliper this would never affect the lift you can lift it as high as you want this this will stay the same because the axle is parallel but the one that matters is this one here which is connected from the axle to the frame because once your axle drop and if this isn't long enough it's gonna explode snap rip or whatever the case is <coughs> and this one is female female because it goes from a male line in and male line out so <coughs> that's what it looks like so here's the new one and honestly this one might be a little bit too long I don't think I needed it this long. I think I honestly, I think I needed about three or four, three inches longer than the stock only. But you know, it's always good to plan for the future. I just hope that this isn't long enough where it might start getting hot by the exhaust because the rear one, the one I just installed on the rear, it's a bit long and it's almost near the exhaust system. So I think I should be good though. So we're gonna try to install this and just let this one hang out like that. So same thing with this one. <laughs> this one has a bracket here. Um, <clears throat> we're gonna go ahead and remove the flare. So 10 mil and then pop this tab out and then same thing, there's a tab right here and there's a flare right there. So make sure you have yourself a flare wrench, a 10 mil, 12 mil socket and uh, whatever socket is to tight the back, um, the new ones back in. And this piece here stays the same. This is your hard line that goes into your MC. So J series lift coming up. Come here soon guys the front passenger side is in i didn't have to remove <coughs> any of the brackets um i did struggle with it a little bit because when i got these um hard line into the hose i had to push the hose all the way towards this end so that i could put the clip back in and i had to bend the hard line a little bit here <coughs> same thing with this one i had to really push it up um to line up but i got them in it's all nice 
what you can see here this one's long this one is touching the radius arm so i have some of these little hoses protector these are styrofoam hose that goes on toyota hoses and stuff like that cooling hose um had a bunch of these laying around i should have done it earlier where i can slip it in but since it's already on i'm gonna have to cut the middle and put it on so i'm just gonna slide this in here just to protect it from rubbing and um since i already put it on i'm just gonna have to cut the middle put it on and then zip tie a bin but if you guys haven't done it yet or if you guys haven't bolted on yet then you can still slide this into the uh you can slide this into the hose where you don't have to uh, cut the middle of it but something um, a little tip that i just found out last minute i was like man what should i use to protect this and i had a bunch of these little protectors so i recommend you guys do this if there's any kind of hitting or anything like that it's not going to hurt or anything like that but this just gives it a little extra protection so so we're done with this one next one is the middle one which is the last one and then after this we'll go ahead and bleed the whole system whenever you're bleeding the brake system you always want to start from the farthest um the farthest of your vehicle and then work your way up so go from there here's what that sleeve looks like i just went ahead and cut the middle and like i said it doesn't look prettiest but it's zip tied in there it just prevents it from sliding around but again this is just to protect the um, actual hose from just rubbing any metal contact but if you guys like it go from there and just gives it some protection here's the last one which is the driver's side middle axle one so the easiest way to do this one was there was literally there's no room to get my flare wrench in there so i ended up taking off the bracket holding the bracket with the vice grip and then you can using your flare wrench to unbolt the hard line and then you can screw it out and then you loosen this guy and then you just straighten up the line and spin the line counterclockwise and then you'll get it out so super simple you don't need to protect um we don't have to put a protector sleeve on this because this isn't hitting anything and this will allow it to do full droop so now we're all set we just have to go bleed the system